Ready to tell the story? You want to tell the story? What happened? What happened, Bobos? Why were you in the hospital? What did you do, son? What did you do? What did you do, Anto? Huh? What did you do? Welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be sharing a story time um, which happened just last month. And this is when my five month, at the time, four month old son had to go to the emergency room. So if you guys hear him, he's right next to me playing. I'm gonna attempt to film this video within the next like five or 10 minutes real quick. So at this time, so just last month, this is December, 2020, I was working from home. So I worked literally in this room and um, Jedediah was with his dad in the other room most of the day until I was off pretty much. And so he's always in the other room or outside with his dad while I'm working in the other room. And I worked from about eight o'clock until roughly two, two thirty. So it was kind of hard for me to line up his feeding schedule with my work schedule because his feeding schedule changed by day. There was no set schedule. So what I had to do was if there was a day in the morning right before I got to work where I knew I could calculate, okay, so he's gonna eat right these times like during these times then then it would work out in those days i would breastfeed him on my breaks but most of the days that did not work so some days i would be off on my break and he would be asleep so for those days what i had to do was i had to start using my stash and for those of you guys that know me you guys know that i had my freezer um full so i had to buy a deep freezer and my deep freezer was extremely full i had a ton of breast milk or at least what i thought was a ton but breast milk goes extremely fast especially when your child is eating four to six ounces almost every feeding and so that's where things went wrong was when i had to start digging into my frozen milk we eventually came down to our last days and i knew it was coming like my milk supply was already low to breastfeed him and then um I, we were already using our milk and our milk was coming running low so i knew that something was gonna happen and i was like okay that means um formula it is so i prepared to give him formula and this formula that i already had in the pantry was the formula that i had given him maybe this his first few days home when i thought he was not going to be breastfed and so i'm like okay he's had it when he was a few days old i'm sure it'll be fine let me look at my calendar this was on december 16th it was a wednesday okay so december 16th comes around i'm at work um and um i can't remember the very like specific times i'm just gonna give you a rough estimate of what happened this day so i'm at work and um i knew that we had fed him our last his last bottle i think like the night before or that first morning feed and so i was like okay the next feeding we're gonna have to give him formula we don't have any more breast milk so i did not do research to know that to get a baby ready for formula you should mix it or try a little bit or do this and that i did not know i just assumed like this is he's used to a bottle i'm gonna give him a bottle with formula instead of breast milk that was definitely my fault i should have did my research but unfortunately we didn't and so what happened was we i'm on a break and we're preparing him a bottle because I think I had pumped. I think I had just finished pumping, something like that. So um, I give him, a, I start, I'm like on the last five minutes of my break. P Pedro makes a bottle. I try feeding it to him. He's not liking this bottle. He's making faces, he's spitting it out. He was like not having it. And I told Pedro, I was like, okay, I gotta go back to work. Like, I'm gonna need you to try to feed him. So I'm leaving to work and all I'm hearing is Jedediah screaming his lungs off. He's just screaming to the top of his lungs. And I go back and my students are like, Ms. Williams, are you okay? And they can see it on my face that I was not paying attention because I was just distracted. I was listening to my son scream in the back. And um, Pedro tells me that he tries feeding him for about 20 minutes on and off. He just tried giving him a little bit, giving him a little bit. He kept spitting that out. He kept crying to where he cried to get enough, just enough food in his stomach just to go back to sleep but he was not happy so my next my last break of the day comes it's um about 12 something i go to my la i go on my last break i check on him and i look at him and i'm like is he okay like why does he look a little pale like he didn't look well i wasn't sure what was wrong and right before this pedro had sent me a picture 
of the mat. So I guess he was doing tummy time on his mat and there was throw everywhere. And I was like, what the heck happened? So he ended up spitting up, throwing up. There's a difference between spit up and throw up to me. Spit up is when, you know, they burp, a little bit of their food comes out, that's spit up. But throw up is like a lot coming out of their mouth at the same time. So he had thrown up for the first time. And then um, I'm watching him and I'm like, he doesn't look like he's as playful as normal. He just didn't look right. And I was worried. So um, I just kept an eye out on him. My break was super short and I was just not happy with what I saw compared to how I seen him last. So I told Pedro, I was like, um, I tried calling the doctor's office, but the doctor's office was not answering. I don't know why they don't answer the phone. So I was like, um, we got to go like get re get him ready. Like I want to go take him to the, to the doctor's office. So I go and log in. Well, I first I tried calling the teacher that I'm subbing for. She didn't answer. So I called, um, not our supervisor, but someone else that could help me. And he was like, you know what? Deal with your son. Um, go ahead and give the assignment for the students. We have like 40, 30, 35, 40 minutes left to pause. Have them work on their own and log out at the time to log out. So I did that. And so we get our stuff. Like I didn't even think. I was like looking busted. Just, we just grabbed our stuff and went to the doctor's office. So luckily, our doctor's office is literally like two minutes away. We get to the doctor's office. They say it's about one o'clock. They say, oh, we don't have anything available till three. And I'm like, I'm not about to go home in case something happens. Like at least there's a doctor here that can help. And they, I did not want to go sweet at the emergency room because first of all, I would have probably went to the wrong hospital. So I'm glad we waited. I signed in and he gets us in within like the next 30, 45 minutes. We go in and he's not seeing his original doctor because she was booked apparently so we saw a new doctor the doctor's questioning us looking at him and the the doctor realizes the doctor realizes how severe like he was like he was very pale he was very lethargic like very weak and she witnessed him throwing up so this is what i forgot to mention so yeah he threw up with pedro but he's also thrown up maybe two or three times after that and it got so bad to where he was throwing up nothing like he was dry heaving and then he was spitting up like he was throwing up like the yellow acid when you have nothing on your stomach mommy's almost done okay he was throwing up like the acid and i know how painful that is and so my poor baby was dealing with that we're we're sitting in the doctor's office and then eventually the doctor that he was looking at us um asked the other doctor which is his original doctor to come in and look they check him out long story short they tell us you guys need to take him to valley children's mm. hospital mm. and so i'm like okay don't tell me twice like i'm taking him and we're going drove like 25 minutes to the hospital and we checked him in tell me why once we walk in those doors this boy wakes up he's looking around he's smiling he's happy i'm like all of a sudden you're fine I was so confused because I know like there was something wrong with him but right when we walked through the hospital doors he seemed better but I'm just so glad we went we got in checked in got a room and they started monitoring him they put him he did throw up he wasn't able to hold his food down for a while still because I had fed him and then he threw it all up but he was a lot happier he was awake he was more himself at this point so they're monitoring him they're checking on us and they do some tests they wanted to scan his um they did an ultrasound on his stomach to check for something and then um he ended up getting tested for covid as well just to make sure he didn't have it and he didn't um but it was a very scary time for pedro and i it was our first like what the heck do we do moment and i was worried because i didn't like how he looked like he didn't look like himself he wasn't this happy joyful crazy baby like normal he was very like out of it very like just unhealthy and um so yeah that's what ended up happening and we stayed in the hospital for a few like probably a few hours they recommended that we um paid attention to the formula to get a gentle like a gentle formula or something and then um, we wanted to make sure he was hydrated. So I've also bought him Pedialyte, but of course he didn't want it because it was, I put it in a bottle. I put it, I also put it in a, in a syringe. He didn't want it. So 
that was rough and from there i was just like you know what if my son doesn't want formula i'm gonna do what i can to breastfeed him so i got some cookies the lactation cookies and i ate those and i'm like i'm gonna do what i can to keep my milk supply up so that i don't have to witness that again um and since then on and off we do give him we try to give him like a little bit of formula but he's still struggling with the bottle he doesn't want the bottle he's i think that kind of traumatized him because even when i put breast milk in the bottle he won't take it and so <clears throat> you okay boys and so um yeah so that was our experience of taking him to the er since i'm breastfeeding him I since I'm breastfeeding him, and I know I have a pretty low milk supply, I'm I'm feeding him every two to three hours, which means that he's not getting, like in my head, he's not getting enough food that he needs to sustain himself throughout the night. So I am still being woken up every three hours at night, so I am not getting a full night's rest. And that is the struggle. That's where I wish, like, man, I just wish I had some milk left so that I can at least give him the last feeding a full bottle and let him sleep be like way better because I know if I'm not getting good sleep, he's not getting good sleep. He's waking up and I try to put him back to sleep, but it's not working because he's ready to eat. And so right now we're struggling a bit, but I have to sacrifice my sleep and my time right now for my son until we get on a schedule. <laughs> <laughs> but um i hope this video made sense i hope i wasn't all over the place i hope he was not distracting you guys too much with his little bubbly noises but um it's our nap time <laughs> and i say ours because i'm taking one with him um <laughs> i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope i didn't leave anything out that was the story of the time Jedediah had to go to the emergency room. Hopefully he doesn't have to go back ever again because that was so scary. Um, look at this joyful baby. Popeye. Hi, handsome. Oh. Hi. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>